Hey, welcome back. In this video, we've got a kinetics moving pulley example problem. So what's going on here is we've got two masses, M1 and M2. We're pulling on a, on mass two with this force F. Basically, that is creating a tension in this cable, which is pulling this pulley to the right. And as the pulley translates to the right, this M2, uh, M1, this blue cable is getting kind of uh, wrapped around it or whatever, and M1 is going to uh, accelerate in the same direction as M2, but at a different rate. So we're going to have a bunch of unknowns and stuff. I'm just going to label it on the diagram. Hopefully this helps us see everything that we've got. Um, in this black cable, we're going to have a tension, let's call it T2, because it's you know close to M2 block. In the blue cable, we're going to have uh, another tension, let's call it T1. Because it's a massless, inertialless, frictionless pulley, the tension is going to be the same on both sides. And then we're going to have some other forces acting on the blocks too. We're going to have a friction acting on this guy, let's call that F1, and we're going to have friction acting on this guy, let's call that F2. So because this pulley is frictionless, massless, and inertialess and all that stuff, if we take a sum of forces, uh, maybe let's change the color, sum of forces across the pulley, it's going to be equal to a mass times acceleration, but because the mass is equal to zero, this whole thing is equal to zero. So the sum of forces across the pulley is equal to zero which means that T2 has to equal 2 times T1 because we have two T1s on one side and one T2 on the other so they net out to being uh, well, two T1s is equal to one T2 <laughs> that's a lot of ones and twos uh, you can also rearrange this if you prefer you can say that T1 is equal to one half T2 we're also going to have accelerations of each block we're going to have A1, this block is going to accelerate to the right and we're going to have A2 as that one accelerates to the right as well. But they're not going to accelerate at the same rate. And the way that you can kind of think through this is as M2 moves to the right, let's pick some random number just to help us think through this. Let's say it moves 10 meters like that. As the pulley moves 10 meters, it's going to release 10 meters worth of cable like that. But also that had to come from somewhere. It's going to take 10 meters from here which basically means that 20 meters of cable is going to pass around the pulley as the block moves, M2 moves to the right 10 meters. We're going to have twice as much displacement in M1 as we did in M2. And we're also going to have, because of the nature of the kinematic equations, we're going to have twice as much acceleration. So let's just erase that green stuff and label that acceleration one, A1, is going to be equal two times A2. Be really careful with these, um, these, these moving pulleys are always act as a multiplier for the tension and the acceleration, and uh, depending on the exact setup of the problem, it's, it's not always the same. You have to really think critically about which acceleration is getting multiplied and by how much. So I find it always helpful to make up some random uh, displacement that's easy to work with, like say 10 meters, and really think about what's passing over the pulley compared to the other one and be really sure that you know that you're confident that uh, you've got the multiplication right. But now that we know the relation between T1 and T2, and also A1 and A2, we can put the whole problem in terms of just one of those variables each, one tension variable and one acceleration, and we'll be able to solve using a free body diagram of each mass in terms of one tension and acceleration, and we'll be able to solve and then work backwards to get everything else. So let's start with a free body diagram of mass one. We've got the uh, six kilograms. Let's write that in the middle so we know which one we're dealing with. Um, we've got tension pulling, T1 pulling to the right. But let's put everything in terms of T2. So let's say we've got one half T2. We've got the, its own weight acting down, it's W1, and that's just going to be six kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, which is 58.86 Newtons. The normal force acting up is just going to be equal and opposite to that, 8.86 newtons. And the friction F1 acting backwards is just going to be mu k times n, so that's 0 0.5, which we had uh, over here, 0 0.5, times normal force 58.86. That's going to give us 29.43 newtons. So let's write Newton's second law. We have the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We're taking right as the positive because that matches its acceleration. Um, and in this case, we need to use A1, but we can rewrite this in terms of A2. So we'll say this is equal to mass times 
2a2. You can pick either to work all in terms of t1 or t2, but I've just decided we're going to use t2 and a2 for both, uh, both free body diagrams. So we have 1 half t2 minus f1 for our force balance, where right is the positive direction, is equal to m times 2a2. So let's fill in some of the things that we know. We have 1 half t2 minus f1, which was 29.43 newtons, is equal to, that was should have a subscript m1. m1 was 6 kilograms times 2 times a2. And like the previous videos, let's isolate for tension because we're going to drop that out by uh, when we get to the next free body diagram. So we've got t2 is equal to... 6 kilograms, we multiply both sides by 4, or sorry, by 2, so we've got times 4 times a2, and that 29.43 comes across as positive, we multiply it by 2, so it's 58.86 newtons. Alright, let's stop there, and we'll move on to drawing the free body diagram of m2, which was 9 kilograms, we've got the weight pressing down on it, same thing, 9 kilograms, times 9.81 is 88.29 newtons. We've got the normal force acting up on that one. It's the same, 88.29 newtons. We've got the applied force acting on this block, so which is 120 newtons. Um, we've got the friction, F2, which is mu k times N2. We should have subscripts really on everything. Uh, so 0 0.5 times 88.29, which is 44.145. And we also have a tension force. We have T2 acting here, as you can see in the original diagram. So let's write Newton's second law again, but for this mass, this time we have sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, we're dealing with mass 2 and A2. So the force balance, which we're taking positive to be the right, we have F minus T2 minus F2 is equal to M2A2. And you'll notice by now that this expression also has the variables T2 and A2, which are matching what we had here, T2 and A2. Um, that's why we just pick one set, because we're going to be dropping out T2 in a second. So let's plug in what we know. We have 120 newtons minus T2 minus 44.145 newtons is equal to M2, which is 9 kilograms, times A2, the unknown. We can simplify a little bit. We get 75.855 newtons minus T2 is equal to 9 kilograms times A2. And we'll bring T2 onto one side, so we get T2 is just equal to 75.855 newtons minus 9 kilograms times A2. All right, let's set those equal to each other. And then group like terms, so we have 33 kilograms times A2 is equal to 16.995 newtons. And then we'll just uh, rearrange for A2, and we're going to find that to be 0 0.515 meters per second squared. So that is the first answer that we're looking for, A2. That is the acceleration of the block on the far right, M2. Um, we also know that uh, we had A1 is equal to 2A2. And so we can find that A1 is just twice that. It's going to be 1.03 meters per second squared. So that is another answer that we're looking for. A1, the acceleration of the small block, M1. And then the next step that we want is we want to find a value for T2 because we have an expression for it right here. We have T2 is equal to this with, a, with the A2 in there. And we also have T2 is equal to this with the A2. So what we can do is we can try both and make sure we get the same answer both ways. So taking the first equation that we have for T2, we have it's equal to 6 kilograms times 4 times the acceleration A2, which is 0 0.515 meters per second squared. 
plus 58.86 newtons. That's going to give us a value of T2 for 71.2 newtons. And let's just check the other expression that we had, which is right here. T2 is equal to this one. So we had T2 is equal to 75.855 newtons minus 9 kilograms times A2, which is 0 0.515 meters per second squared. And that gives us a value of 70.9 newtons. So that's just the difference there is just rounding throughout the problem. So we can say that T2 is just going to be equal to about 71 newtons. And the only unknown that we have left was the blue cable T1, and we had an expression for that, T1 is equal to 1 half T2. So T1 is just going to simply be 35.5 newtons. So there we go. We found the acceleration of each block, the unknown tensions in each cable, and uh, yeah, well, just be careful with these moving pulley problems because they're always a bit tricky. And just make sure that uh, really you get the relation between the two accelerations correct, which takes a little bit of reasoning. Um, because finding the tension, the relation between the tensions is usually pretty easy. It's just often a two times multiplication. Um, and just got to be careful which way you go with the acceleration. As it's not always as clear which way to do it. But uh, like I recommend, uh, the way that I like to do it is make up some displacement. Try to reason which block is going to move further than the other. And then that one's going to have a larger acceleration as well as displacement. So you can really identify what the relationship will be. And then when you go through and calculate using the two different free body diagrams, make sure you're putting everything in the same terms, whether you pick A1 or A2, and T1 or T2, it should work out at the end.